everyone. I am Mustafa Madin, a fourth year dental student at the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, and the editor in chief of the KB Club, College of Medicine, University of Lagos. Hello, everyone. My name is Felicia Kiwandi, a fifth year medical student of the College of Medicine, University of Lagos. I'm also the vice president of the KB Club. KB Club is a social philanthropic organization founded in 1969 by a group of male medical students headed by Professor Oladapo Ashu OFR. The club is on three core issues academic excellence, philanthropy, and social empowerment. This is a special interview session with the 12th Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. Professor Uluwatumi Ugulipe, FAS. Set, this is an interview session set to feature in the, 20, in the 2022 Medifield edition of the KB Club and another, the annual publication of the KB Club. Themed Ebu, um, the gift. This is, uh, this is as proven that the, the Vice Chancellor is the gift to the University of Lagos. Sir, can you please tell us about yourself? Tell us your background. Please, Professor Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ogugipe Uluwatoi Dimitayo. Was born in Lagos at the island maternity, uh, May 31st, 1960. Professor Uluwatoi Dimitayo Ogugipe went to Ararami Baptist School, Moloni Street, Lagos. From there, he went to a Cobos High School and um, later went to the CMS Grammar School. In 1981, Professor went to the then University of Ife to study botany. And in 1990, at the Obafemi Aulawa University, he got his PhD in botany. Thereafter, he resumed work at the University of Lagos, May 16, 1990. And from there, progressed from being a lecturer one to a professor in 2002. And gave his inaugural lecture 21st of December, 2005. Then, started as a dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies before that 2007 when he became the Dean of the School of Modern Studies. 1998 to 2000, he was the sub-dean of the Faculty of um, Science under Professor Abatunde Shofuluwe. Then, in 2002, he became the head of the Department of Botany and Microbiology, the department which he Headed till 2007. 2007 to 2011, he became the dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies. And 2012 to 2016, he was the director of academic planning. Thereafter, he was appointed the, so the deputy vice chancellor of academics and research here in the University of Lagos. And by divine arrangement, from November 12th, 2017, he was appointed the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos to the glory of God, acting as an ambassador of God as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. And I always say it, that God is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. I am just an instrument in his hand to implement all that he has for the University of Lagos. That is a very rich and wholesome background. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing that with us. So what would you say have been your guiding principles and your core values that have seen you through these years? Well, I would say that my mother always tells me something when I was young. I always say, protect your character. Your character is very important in life. If you lose everything, you lose your character. So I've always been jealously guiding that character 
Two, my mother always tell me, very go to the humble in life. Humility is very key in life. So that's I keep to it. Um, I don't believe in carrying myself in such a way that people will see arrogance in me. I always give respect to people around me. So character, humility, value. Valuing what God has given to me. Next thing is the fear of God. I believe that anybody that does not fear God is not, uh, is not fit to be. Fear of God in the scripture says is the beginning of wisdom. And the, 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 the other side of it, in Yoruba, they will say that in your fire of law, you must fear God. When you fear God, you respect people around you, you appreciate people around you. You, you want to do the best so as to make God be happy with you. Thank you very much, sir, for that. So, despite all odds, your appointment at the Vice Chancellor of the University of University of November 2017, as you said, came as a result of being the most qualified and most outstanding candidate. How did you react to the news? I don't want to say that, that I was the most qualified, though I just, uh, it's the mercy of God. I know the Moriba. It's not because I'm better than others, it's not because I am an outstanding person. No, it's because the scripture says I will have mercy on who I ought to have mercy on. I will have compassion on who I ought to have compassion on. I was not the best. But God just decided to honor me with his glory. You remember when David was to be anointed? His brother stood before Samuel, but none of them was to be anointed until David came. And what happened is because Samuel saw soldiers. God looked at the heart and saw the heart of a prophet in the life of uh, David. So I was not the best. So but I can't go for everything. <laughs> so looking back at the past five years of the exemplary service to the university, what would you say has been some of your greatest achievements as the Vice Chancellor? Well, I would say that I've um, been able to bring peace to the University of Lagos. I've been able to bridge the gap between India and Africa. I've been able to say we have a one university. I've been able to see our students doing well, which I am proud of. For being able to see our colleagues excelling in the area of research, that now people say in the University of Lagos, getting research is a very simple thing. And also, for what we are experiencing concerning our relationship with other universities, I just came back from um, Scotland, where we visited the University of Dundee, Glasgow. Edinburgh and um, one other university, and also in, um, in Germany. You know, even before talking to some of these uh, presidents, or vice chancellors of those universities, they are looking forward to having collaboration with us. So that gladdens my heart that today, if I leave, I did not leave the university with us. How I've been able to take the University of Lagos to a higher level to be the greatest among the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So everyone has plans for things they want to do. And then um, you know, certainly being the vice chancellor of the University of First Choice is no ordinary feat. What would you say have been some of the challenges you faced while achieving these goals? These, these accomplishments, what were some of the challenges you faced and how did you were able to conquer them? Well, I would say the first one is passing the message across to the people. Passing the message 
across to the people. You know, when I came in, I had the, the Unilag with each um, and the U meaning of compromise academic and excellent research uh, output from the university and the aim for networking globally, locally and strategizing um, the way that you can move the university forward. The I in way that is for improving university finances by innovative way or true innovative way and the L leadership that is um, transformational, transparent and transnational. The A is about accountability, accountability in academic um, administration and in other areas. And the G, greater uh, and the best. So with this, now passing the message across to the people. Because that is one thing one must do. So that we carry people along with you. You are a general. Yes, you are a good, you are a general. You are a good general. What about the people around you? Are they key into your vision as a general? So that was the first problem to transmit this across to our colleagues, which by the grace of God, one was able to do. And the second one was to not break the barrier of tradition. This was the way we have been doing it. You know, it's a very difficult thing. That is the time that you need to <laughs> break so many barriers. The barriers of tradition, the barriers of um, we are the one who are there before, the barriers of people that believe in power. They don't know that all power belongs to God. Uh, the, the, the barrier of manipulators, the, the barrier of psychopaths. You know, that's a very big problem. Psychopaths. You need to break that barrier. And for somebody like me who don't believe in um, all these psychophants, and people are saying, ah, this is your I don't believe in it. Then you are telling me, ah, this is your I just wasted your time. Because I have my goal, I have a vision, and I have a vision that God has given me um, concerning this job. So, doing, making sure that you are able to manipulate yourself through this, uh, uh, the, 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 the stumbling blocks, it needs the, the, the divine intervention of God, the divine intervention of God. Now all the time that despite all the obstacles, despite all the principalities and power, <laughs> God is there with me, I'm standing, and um, just about three months, or four months, less two weeks now for me to leave office by the grace of God and move to the next level. So God is doing very good. Um, it's, the one, it's not my mind, it's not my power. It's not that I know how to do it. It is God. Thank you. Thank you very much. I must say that the acronym you formed for my life is outstanding. So, sir, as at August 2020, there were some visible signs of a rumble in the leadership of the University of Lagos, sir. At some point, you were removed, but later you were reinstated. Many students at that time were in the dark of what exactly was happening, what was going on. Do you mind shedding more light on the events around the <laughs> Why don't you wait for that <laughs> I was not removed. I was not removed. What the government said was that I should recuse myself, I should step aside. I was not removed. When I look at it very I was not removed. Government just said that I should step aside for them to do the proper investigation. And that was done. What I was speaking, I didn't feel bad. That was the time I arrested most. <laughs> <laughs> that was the time I ate most. That was the time I slept most. That was the time my wife saw me most. That was the time I have peace most. You can't believe it. You can ask some of my friends who are close, who are very close to me. When I say my friend, I have very few friends. I remember when it happened. I wanted to fast. And God told me, Who told you to fast? Who and start eating and celebrating? I 
I said, no, but this is battle. He said, are you a prophet of bad? <laughs> <laughs> so I started it. It's only that I said, ah, God, what is happening? This team almost fire for fire. God told me, go and start eating and celebrating. And I now asked God, I said, God, why are you saying this? He said, if you fast, you will be lame. And people would think that it has affected you. And that was why I said, eat and celebrate. Because what you do today, or the result that you get today, you have invested in it before today. You understand this? You know, like somebody going to the bank, and you now say, you don't have, you have 10 cobalt in your account. You have to bring out the check of 20 cobalt. You can't get it. So, I want to say that during that time, I have so much peace. But another interesting thing is that some of them, when they come to the lodge to see me, and they see me sleeping, and they are coming to come and um, sympathize with me, and they now see me. Ah. So I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be telling them, ah, okay, what is wrong? What is going on? They'll be looking at me. This ah, lady that they have come to sympathize with is the one that is just gisting with us. I didn't feel bad at all. I just know that in life there are stages. And when you are meant to go higher in life, there will be storm. There will be people that want to stand against you, people that want to pull you down. But look up unto your God, who is the author and finisher of your feet. Don't look up unto man. Man, I tell people one thing he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. I don't, I don't fight people, I hand them over to them. So when it came, it came as a surprise because I was at that meeting. Honestly speaking, what happened that day, anything I think about it, for nothing, I'm saying this for the first time, for nothing. But I had that faith in me that day that I told one of them, hey, you people are jokers. You cannot go far. Do you know what is this? I say you are jokers, you cannot go far. Thank you very much, sir. Because the former deputy vice chancellor, Professor Olasha Dimitrova, she is also a patron of the KD Club. During that time, what role did she play? Um, I will talk about the rest of the show. Ujola is a faithful person, straightforward, firm, principled, stand by the truth, tell you the way it is, and a lively person, and somebody that always wants to add value to the most time. Let me stop at that for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we know you to be someone who is very big on research. You mentioned it earlier. How will you say the University of Lagos has performed in general in terms of research outputs? Well, um, if there's any area of all the things that um, God gave me and I came up with that we have really succeeded in, is in the area of research. Uh, we have done very well, not excellently well, but we have done very well in the area of research that. Even in this country as are today, the Ministry of Lagos is a factor to be reckoned with in the area of research at the local level, at the global level, everywhere. Even non teaching staff are able to attract research grants. Not only academic staff, non teaching staff are able to attract research grants. Our students too are able to attract research grants. But this week, one of our colleagues in the Faculty of Science. I just got a letter. She'll be getting an award in South Africa and also in Germany. I, would have, I got a research grant of 32,000 euros at ADCA. One of my mentees, 18,000 euros 
we have um, two or three setters that got a stack grant of four, four million dollars each, about four million dollars each. And in other areas, the College of Medicine, we have so our college getting stack grant. So we have done very well in the area of um, attracting the stack grants to the university. So, so as a follow-up to that, we've spoken a lot about how colleagues of yours are getting research. What would you say is your assessment on how students especially are very heavily involved, be it on their own or with their lecturers in getting these research grants? The Pugdali students, they are doing well in that area with their supervisors. Just like myself, I mentioned one of my mentees. I got a sub grant of 18,000 euros. And um, most of my colleagues, too, when they get the sub grant, they bring in the postgraduate student for the research work. And the postgraduate student also gets something stipend from that uh, grant. Even if they don't get stipend, they get a PhD to use. And some of them are sent out to attend conferences or training outside the university or within the university. So uh, I want to say that uh, we have been able to manage the successes very well. Brilliant. Thank you very much, sir. So in your words, Nigerian University Games, how would you describe the Luga 2022 experience and how would you rate the University of Lagos performance? Well, I want to say that the Luga Games I cannot assess myself, I cannot award myself any mark. But based on what I read um, on the social, um, social, what is it called? The social media, the print media, and everywhere, I want to say that it was a success story. And even when I go out, and people will talk about Luga games. And you guys have done very well with me. Nigeria proud that we can we handle something and do it very well. And my other colleagues, my other vice chancellors, all of them talk about the Luga games. You know, we hosted 82 universities, about 10,000 athletes. And from the study, every day, we have nothing less than 21,000 people on campus every day. I see security wise, you are able to manage the, the community successfully with the security network on ground. Um, health wise, the, the medical people were uh, doing they did very well. Traffic wise, well, we even thought that there would be a lot of traffic. You know, we have the music village at um, UBA Park, which is very close to the, to the gates, thinking that there will be traffic. Everything was not seamlessly. If you go to the Gaines village, people were eating, having, enjoying themselves. And to add uh, the icing to the cake, you now have the two, the guy, the two athletes that said they are going to get married and want to post it together. Concerning the the Ila coming second, well, you know we are not very strong in swimming. And what other universities are doing, we cannot do it. <laughs> <coughs> we cannot do it because this is Ila. Ila is exposed to so many things. I tell people what other universities can do and get away with, we cannot do it in Ila. I'll give you one example which I've always been given. One of the universities in the southwest here, the non-teaching staff were on strike. And the VC knew that they are going to lock the gates the following day. And overnight, he told people to go and remove the gates. <laughs> and they removed the gate to the university. I never read about it in any media. If it is really like CNN will carry it. <laughs> So what other universities will do and get away with? I remember one university that the student went on rampage, the university was closed down. We just read about it for uh, maybe two days. 
if it is similar to A, they will keep on talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. But what other universities can do, we cannot do it. So concerning the, our athletes, if you look at our athletes, you know that they brought in the best and they did very well. <clears throat> what is the lesson that we have learned? We now have Olympic size swimming pool. And gold medals from swimming, swimming alone is about 44 or 48. So now we are now going to start training our own athletes, getting our own athletes in that we are sporting activity. And the other one I think is uh, Taekwondo or something like that. So we are going to now prepare for the next Buddha Games. What is the, 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 the what we have gotten? After the Buddha Games, we are going to host the African Sports Festival, the University uh, Sports Festival now in 2024. The University of Lagos and last year we co host the, the sporting activities in 2024. And the community was peaceful during that time. And then um, everything, uh, it came, those people that came from other universities were surprised to see that we have electricity supply that's mm -hmm. like on campus. They were taking pictures. Those that never saw lagoon before, <laughs> they went to the lagoon. And uh, you see the, the campus bubbling. And this, the support we got from the non teaching staff, from the academic staff, despite the fact that there was strike around that time, they gave all the necessary support. And the follow-up to that is that you will see that some of the athletes that competed now will go global. That's part of what we thought we need to bring into focus. And we want to thank the alumni for supporting us. We want to thank the friends of the university for coming out to support us. Like the governor of Lagos State, Bajide Sawunu, the governor of Aqua Ibon State, the governor of your state, who are all alumni of the University of Lagos, they really supported us. And some of the banks, like GT Bank and others. So we brought a new dimension into Luga Games. You can see the fireworks. Very fun. And we are saying that it's not the coup for sure, it's the coup for gold. <laughs> That was indeed, it was indeed a very memorable event for everyone that was opportune to be a participant. You know that some people are people that came from other universities, they would call their colleagues, where are you? Do you know what is happening in Lagos? And people were coming in. I'm telling you, they just tell them, ah, it's happening in Unilag. <laughs> Next thing that people will now board the um, bus or the enter bus from wherever they are coming from, from the east, from the God will help us in really that though. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just an evidence of living up to our name of Nations Pride. Yeah, we, you know, so I tell people one thing. We really have the main universe of first choice. Look at the recent exam, exam that was done. Out of the first 10, 4 applied to really that. Out of the first 10, as per the results, the first 10 best results. Four of them, the best results, 365, applied to come to the lab. Last year, the best results, although the boy was 15 years old, applied to come to the lab. So, University of Lagos is the most preferred university. Other people can say that they have more people applying through JAM to come to their university. The question is, what is their cut off? What is their admission requirement? And make bold to say that the University of Lagos will be the most preferred university. Our cut off is 200, then we accept only one city. So they can go to all that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Very in depth. So, as a follow up to Nuga, Quite a huge investment was made towards renovation in terms of acquiring new facilities and probably upgrading on the existing ones. Let's talk about maintenance, sir. What is the university's plan towards maintaining this standard or even going further and higher? 
Well, what, what we are going to do, like the swimming pool, we are going to have concession. Uh, have somebody that we are going to uh, have bilateral agreements so that they will maintain and we have a way of sharing the, the funds that we generate through that platform. The same thing we are going to do with the sports center and other facilities there. But well, if you don't do that, they are going to run it down. I'm going to run it down. And it will be sad if I come back in 10 years' time and look at the sports center and it's not getting better. It's been a lot of investment, like we rightly said, a lot of investment, a lot of efforts, a lot of convincing, a lot of um, energy put into it. People are coming from other universities now to come and see what they have there. They are really impressed. Our swimming pool with the gallery is the best in the country now. With, with the timing, the best in the country. The gallery, fantastic. So, we have a good cricket pitch, which is the best in the country too. Uh, so, to maintain it, I just pray that uh, within the next one month or two months, we'll be able to finalize that. That's beautiful, sir. That's beautiful, sir. So, sir, let's now move towards the educational system of the upper pop for us. In light of the incessant strike actions that have now seemed to become a part of our educational system for public universities, um, what what do you think? How do you think this will impact on the quality of education in Nigeria? Well, um, concerning the strike. I believe that it's just a matter of understanding. It's just a matter of valuing university education. It's just a matter of valuing education. And it's just a matter of making sure we have give our children the best. So how does it affect the students? Definitely it's going to affect the student. The student that has been out of uh, school for five months now, some of them will have gone into so many vices to survive. Some of them will have gone into so many businesses. Some of them are doing well in the area of uh, IT. Uh, but the summary of it is that definitely is going to affect the students. And also it's going to affect the, 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 the staff too. Well, you won't believe it that people are living. That's the unfortunate thing. By the time we resume, I'm sure nothing less than five percent of our staff will have left the university system. So it's sad that uh, this is what we are going through. But I believe that government and us will be at home and they will be able to resolve it soon. Okay, so let us look at your point of view. As an astute academician that you are, do you see any viable alternative to strike actions as a tool for negotiations between the government, like you said, and unions, government as the employers and unions as um, employees? Well, I, what I know is that um, also they have their point, government, they have their reason. Asu believes that the only way they can make the government to attend to them is to go outside. So what government can do is to make sure that they don't go outside. Thank you very much, sir. So sir, you are a very student-centric personality and I like to give this example. During the Yuga Games, I mean, I came for almost every event during the Yuga Games and there was a day on two different occasions that I spotted you like an ordinary a supporter in the stands without any form of security or anything from back home, talking to students around you about the match you're watching. And that really sent the message how familiar and how close you are to the student body. So, sir, um, among students of this institution, you're a very student centric personality, and students and staff have expressed their pride in having you as the face of the Union Lab Brand, going to the accessibility and togetherness. You are fostered in your reign as vice chancellor. What few words of advice do you have to students 
for this prestigious university during this trying period of industrial action? Well, I just want to plead with the students to uh, please accept the apology that uh, this strike has taken this long. Two, I want them to know that I will not need for them to be focused despite the storm. This is not the first time. When we are student to have that um, closure. I remember when I was doing my master's, the university was closed, was shut down for five months. We used to say that Tuesday, we used to say that at five months, ten days, two hours. So but I believe that things will get better in the area of negotiation. So to the students, when they come back, they should just put in their efforts so that they can get the, the best in terms of their results. That should not limit them. That should not make them to forget about Nigeria and say Nigeria is good for nothing. <laughs> no, you cannot do that. At least you can see the girl that came first at the World Sports Athletics. Something. So the championship. She's a Nigerian. I'm sure when she, she was shedding that tears, the tears of joy, maybe she remembered that ah, came from that country and I brought glory to that country. <laughs> but we all belong to we should see ourselves as a Nigerian. And uh, it will get better. It will get better. That is what I mean. It will be getting better. Thank you so much, sir. And we will hold on to that and we seriously look forward to it as students that we are as well. So, sir, the KB Club is a um, stu medical student social philanthropic organization that has existed for 53 years now. And we have we are students, and like you said, our life um, keeper is the members who have existed as members of the club. Um, we have striven we have striven that you know to put smiles on the faces of people through our philanthropic, academic and social aims. Um, so what, what is your assessment of the club's activities and some of the individuals affiliated with the club? You mean your uh, Yes, the KB Club. Yes, well, Professor Ashiru is one of my boss. <laughs> and uh, I know that anything that is interesting, in, you always uh, put your mind as touch on it. Make sure you give it a classic uh, life. So, concerning the students, I think I had interaction with uh, the club about three years ago, if I still remember. And in one way or the other, I want to say that they, they are fantastic people. They have their purpose, they follow the purpose, and to make sure that through that purpose, they make the club to contribute to the development of the university, to support the community one way or the other. And I believe that um, the people coming behind them will do better. Thank you very much, sir. So, sir, for a man of your caliber and your position, you call it with the tasks with your responsibility of this great city that How is life? Outside work for you because you do to relax. <laughs> what do I do to relax? <laughs> well, I saw my God. I saw my God. I like dancing. Wow. Oh, I think that's when, I, when I'm in the church, <laughs> I dance. You see, I, I dance because that is the only sacrifice I can give God. So I don't joke with that. When I'm in the camp, I dance. I remember. Some years back, before I became the VC, we had a group on the altar that we dance, about 10 of us. They know us. To the extent that the ushers, they keep our seat for us. So now that I'm the VC, I make sure I dance. So it's one of the um, ways I used to praise my God. Then I'm a family man. Family man, I don't joke with my family. Uh, the children that God gave me, they are feeling their own first degree. 
I went to international school here in the outside the country, working outside the two of them working and one of them still in the university doing his masters. What do I do? I read my Bible, have my interaction with my God, and then draw more vine, draw life from God. Because the journey I have is still far. So in about three to four months. Four months, less two weeks. <laughs> I count it. Okay, so I want to leave the seat. <laughs> yeah, you are moving to greater heights. glory from the vice chancellor's position. Who would you like to be remembered by? One thing is, have you left or are you leaving behind as the vice chancellor? Hmm. I would say that. Um, legacy is that I've been able to maintain peace in this university like never before. Stability in the university like never before. I've been able to move the university to a greater level that is appreciated and noticed at the local and international level. The University of Lagos now is a brand. It's a brand anywhere you get to. And you say you are from the University of Lagos. Honestly speaking, travel outside this country, you see that. All they know you are from the University of Lagos. It's a brand. So God has used me to lift the university up, to make the university to be visible, to make the brand to be recognized and celebrated. These are, these are definitely true words, words that everyone in Bethany agree to. So, sir, on a lighter note to end, um, the thing for this magazine, Medifield, which is our annual publication, the Cape Cod annual publication, is themed Ebu, meaning the gift. So, we'd like to ask, you know, what is the most memorable or the best gift you have ever received? <laughs> the most memorable. It's my relationship with God. That's very key to me. Because I believe other things will disappear. That's one thing that will not go away from you. Your relationship with God. That's the best gift I have. And I keep on cherishing. Uh, that's the best gift. And God has been very kind to me. It's just like when I applied for this job in 2017, I heard from God that I should apply. I'm telling you, God told me I should apply. I applied. When they were doing their manipulation, God said, It's true. At the end of the day, in the manipulation, God brought me. So what I cherish most is my relationship with God. He has always been my guy. When I applied 2000, 2002, when I was being process for my professorship, and I was praying, God, this thing, this promotion, let it come. God gave me my inaugural lecture title, Roots in the Past, Route to the Future. I wrote it down in the camp and I told the person inside that said, This is what God is telling you. I'm praying about my promotion to be appointed as a professor. God is giving me an oral lecture. I said, God, what? Somebody that is not pregnant cannot deliver a baby now. God did not say anything to me. 2005 was in the UK doing my research work there. And God told me that I should start writing my oral lecture. Ah. I've not been called for the interview now. 2005. They have been, they were processing my paper from 2002 to 2005. March 2005. Because they have start writing my inaugural lecture. You know, they are not coming for the professor interview now. Why should I be writing my inaugural lecture? I said, writing, start writing. And I started writing. Now I said, it's my relationship with God. 
Then you do will not believe. When I go to the library, God will say, take this book. I will take the book, the page that I need to prepare my inaugural lecture. Then, June, but the, the interview was supposed to be at April. I was, in, I was in the UK, so I said, I was not around. I don't attend the interview, so it was rescheduled. I think uh, my dad, I can't remember if it was in May. And the appointment was announced in June or July. June, back to 2002. And that day, I remember that day they were having council meeting, I was on my way to the UK. So when I went back to London, I said, we have to finalize the writing up of the project. So I will be to the glory of God, the first person in this university that delivered his inaugural lecture six months after the announcement to the glory of God. So when I got back to London, I prepared the inaugural lecture, I gave it to my host, and I came and I told the, the, the people in academic affairs that I want to deliver my inaugural lecture. They were like, are you serious? I said, yes, I want to deliver my inaugural lecture. They said, there is no date. I said, God told me at this 2005, before the end of this 2000, I must give my inaugural lecture. So the man now told me, Mr. Kano, the man's name is Mr. Kano, he was in charge of the academic affairs. Academic affairs are the one that was scheduled for the inaugural lecture. My brother called and said, hey, what about um, December 21st? That what? That will be around the time we will be going home for Christmas. I said, it's okay with me. December 21st. Now I said, it's my relationship with God. It's not that I'm good, though. It's not that I'm holy, you. It's not that I'm better than others, though. I stand on the word of God that says, I will have mercy on who I want to have mercy on. I will have compassion on who I want to have compassion on. When I came to this university in 1990, I was supposed to be a lecturer too. A lecturer. A lecturer to lecturer. But I was not interviewed. They just employed me. And when the interview was conducted, later in the year, I think around October, the next thing I had was that I was giving lecture one instead of lecture two. I'm updated to May 16 and I started working in the University of Lagos. I have no godfather. God is my godfather. So that's why I said, is this my relationship with God that I cherish so much? So much I don't joke with it. I, I, it's my relationship. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. On our gift, the gift of God is something that is eternal, timeless, it has no time bound. And this has been a gift for me seated here with you today, sir. I believe it has been a gift for, for every one of us. I've been there with the club and I've been there with the College of Medicine and the University of Lagos as as a whole, um, say a very big thank you for granting us this. Um, thank you so much, sir. And um, yes, you've been an Evan. You are an Evan <laughs> to the College of to the, to the University of Lagos. Thank you so much, sir. And um, four months, less two weeks. Yeah, we believe that. I will invite you. We're looking oh, forward to it, oh, sir. You know, you know the unique thing about that day. Yes, sir. It is 11. 11, 22, 22. 22. Wow. 11 plus 11 is what? 20, 20. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. It has been an absolute honor sitting here with you today. So, uh, we've come to the end of this special interview session with the 12th Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, Professor Uluwa Tony Tinitayo Ndipe. F-E-S. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.